Welcome to the FDN Thrive Podcast. We interview leaders in the functional health space who bring you the most up-to-date, cutting-edge information for people who have tried it all for their health issues. We hope you enjoy the show. Shortly after that, I was diagnosed with skin cancer uh, or around the age of 24, and, and it was really odd because there was no history of skin cancer in my family. There was no history of any cancers related to skin cancer in my family. So that means that there's not this genetic component. When we think about things like cancer, we usually quickly, you know, think about a genetic component and in my family, there has not been. Hey there folks, and welcome back to another episode of the FDN Thrive Podcast. My name is Evan Transu, AKA Health Coach Ev, and I have the privilege of being your host for today's interview. Now, this is a fun one, and hold up, I know I say that for every single episode, I'll probably continue to say that for every single episode, but know that I mean it when I say it. <laughs> I absolutely have a blast with this, and this one's particularly fun to me because this is with the woman, Jen Maleka, who actually got me into FDN in the first place. I met her when she was giving a talk in a coffee shop to about 20 or 30 people in the heart of San Diego several years back, and I was sold on this being something that I had to do. She literally took me out to lunch, paid for it, got on the phone with me for free. Um, I had nothing to offer this person really, and she was just that nice to do it. So. Just goes to show you uh, the type of people in FDN and why I am so privileged to be working with them and helping out here. A little bit about Jen. Uh, she is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, obviously, and she's also a master transformational uh, coach. She is also a self-proclaimed happiness advocate, confidence builder, and chaos organizer. And I will say that I can attest to her being all three of those self-proclaimed things. What she does is she supports busy health-minded professionals in taking back control of their health by giving them access to the right lab tests and resources so they can find the missing pieces of their health puzzle, actually fix what is wrong, and get back to feeling like themselves. Jen also does an incredible amount um, on the business side of things with FDN. She has a wonderful mind for business. And if I'm not mistaken, she is one of the people who was pushing out the conference that we've been hosting over the last few years and are hopefully going to be able to swing in 2021, even amidst the COVID pandemic. So she is just over overall an awesome person. I cannot wait for you to hear her story and what she's overcome. So without further ado, let's get to the interview. Hey, Jen, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate it. I'm excited to be here with you, Evan, talking about all the good stuff that we do. Right. Now, guys, Jen is a really cool practitioner to be interviewing. Not that all the practitioners aren't awesome. Um, but, you know, for those that don't know, and I'm assuming most of the audience wouldn't, Jen was the FDN that got me into FDN myself. It was really awesome. I drove out with a buddy of mine from Pennsylvania to California to figure out my health issues. Um, you know, where there is a stereotype in the East. I'm not sure if this is in other parts of the country, but I knew that's where all the quote unquote hippies were. And I would not consider FDN's hippies. They're certainly like a wonderful mix of both the Western and the Eastern, right? It's kind of like analyze with Western, fix with Eastern. I think that's a really healthy balance. But nonetheless, I'm like going to all these health meetups and I met Jen at a local coffee shop and I was hearing her story. And when I heard that, I knew that was kind of the reason I had come to California because... I was reading all this stuff online at the time, doing my own research, as many of you listening are probably doing. I mean, this might be a form of research for you right now, right? Listening to these podcasts. And I had heard all these incredible stories. I knew natural medicine worked. I just needed to meet someone because no one that I knew had had a story like this. I needed to meet someone in person. I needed to see them. I needed to be able to talk with them. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. You know, I, I got to hear from a real person who has an awesome story of healing, which obviously we're going to dive into today. And that's what got me into FDN. So, um, Jen, this is definitely cool to be here, you know, uh, almost four years later, I guess it was January of 2017. So it's kind of oh crazy gosh. how time flies, but I'm very thankful for your coffee shop talk that day. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's insane. I can't believe it's been that long. Time does fly. And I can remember that day so clearly also. So it's exciting to come full circle and be talking with you here today. Absolutely. All right. So let's dive into you and your story. What was Jen Maleka like as a kid? And of course, I kind of know some of the answers to this, but humor me. Mm -hmm. um, were you dealing with a lot of health issues at the time or, 
you know, did you kind of maybe have some symptoms here and there, but you were overall like every other kid? I was overall like every other kid. I was really um, active as I kind of talk about in my story that, you know, I was, I would say always like health minded in some kind of way. I was the kid that was out playing until the sun went down, like going on adventures up in the hills behind our house. Uh, never really had anything major happen, but I did have uh, reoccurring like ear infections as a kid. And then I had reoccurring ear infections that came back when I was in college as a result of the decline that had happened in my health, like over time, essentially. So I would say that the first kind of real obvious signs that something was probably wrong or going astray health-wise was really when I reached adolescence and went into puberty and started my menstrual cycle because right from day one, it was never you know, regular or normal. And at the time I didn't know that there was anything wrong because it's so widely accepted. I mean, when a, a young female starts her menstrual cycle or is, you know, at any point in her menstrual cycle when something's going wrong, the, you know, most common response to that is like, well, let's put you on birth control. And that's really what happened to me. And I just didn't know any better at that time. So I'm really passionate about helping women to understand that better that that's not a necessarily a solution but you know aside from that you know definitely fairly healthy kid growing up like no major um you know traumatic events or sicknesses or illnesses no mono like anything like that that some people have experienced in their life gotcha and i love what you said about it's so widely accepted because one of our go-to lines in the functional space especially as fdns is you know just because something is common does not mean it's normal. And especially for you know myself growing up, and obviously, I mean, you're a younger person too, like our kind of generations and even mixed generation, I feel like we grew up with a lot of these health symptoms. And now, since we have this almost detective lens, like we're already seeing the expansion in, you know, my people younger than me, like a five-year-old or a 10-year-old, I'm seeing different health issues in my cousins or just people that I know. And it's pretty scary, but it's subtle. And I see how we got to this point of like this widespread acceptance. It just seems like, oh, you know, every now and then it gets a little worse. And, you know, all of a sudden it's just enough of a trickle over time that you don't really notice there's a huge problem. But none of this stuff is normal. And even what you said with like the recurring um, infections, that's something that's like common. That's like mm -hmm. par for the course in today's world, but that's not really a good sign of overall health. So I know that for you, as you got into later adolescence and especially um, in your twenties, this is when things like really started to change health wise. And it even led to a serious diagnosis. So maybe you could walk us through that journey and what you were experiencing then, and then leading up to that diagnosis that I just referred to. Yeah. And it is really so subtle, Evan. It was like, you know, it was like things just started accumulating over time. And it's, it's kind of that concept of that slow weight gain process where you keep having to like undo like a notch on your belt loop until there's no more belt like notches left on the belt loop because you've outgrown it and you wake up one day and you're like crap how did i put on 15 or 20 pounds because it's been this slow progressive thing that's happened over time and that's definitely exactly what i experienced health wise so as i mentioned before like my menstrual cycle was certainly probably the most prevalent like first instance that I had, but you know, birth control instantly cured that, right? And I went from having a painful, irreg extremely erratic and irregular menstrual cycle to having no menstrual cycle at all. So swung in the other direction, but you know, as a modern day woman trying to make it in like a, a man's world, that was great, right? Like I, I thought that it was amazing to be able to control that and just to move on with my life and not have it interfere with what I was trying to do. So um, carried on about my way. And as you alluded to, like when I got into my twenties, when I was in college is when I kind of started to notice that something wasn't right. Like I grew up in Northern California, which is a, a far, I grew up in a farming town, farming area, with lots of pollens and, you know, different things growing and all that stuff. But when I moved to San Diego, Southern California, all of a sudden I had seasonal allergies and I, I remember clearly thinking back then, like, this is so odd. You know, I moved from this place where there's all this farming and agriculture going on, where you would think that you would have allergies to, 
living by the beach, by the ocean, where you would think that you wouldn't have allergies. And they progressively got worse over time. And this is when the ear infections came back. Like I would get these really insane kind of like, almost like hay fever, brain foggy days. Like it was really hard for me to keep my eyes open in the afternoon. Like in my classes, I remember just walking home from my college courses, like from school. And, and it was a struggle. Like my body was in pain. My ears would be hurting and be stuffed up and congested all the time. And, um, and just wondering like what was going on, you know, but because it was seasonal when it wasn't happening, I just kind of forgot about it. Right. And this continued on as I graduated college. And then when I got my first um, real kind of career job as a personal trainer and a manager of a fitness facility, these things continued to happen and they definitely became more consistent. And I would, I, I worked like a, um, an alternate shift as a trainer. Like I would come in in the morning and train some clients and then come back in the afternoon. And at my lunch break before coming back in the afternoon, I would go to Starbucks and get like a double iced Americano and definitely you know, fill it up with a ton of dairy full creamer and <laughs> even drinking like a double Americano, I would be struggling to keep my eyes open and keep, be able to stay focused on my clients. And I remember this one time, you know, back then we didn't have all of these, um, online calendar and scheduling systems that we had. Now we had this huge calendar book that was blank in every month you know, as the, the fitness manager running the, the personal training team, I would have to sit down and write down everybody's schedule using like a permanent marker. And one day I was doing this and I got so nauseous and sick from the fumes of the permanent marker that I had to go home and it like wiped me out for the whole day. And now you and I know that like chemical sensitivities are, you know, clues about yeast overgrowth and gut bugs and toxicity and all kinds of stuff going on in the body. But then I didn't really have a clue. And um, shortly after that, I was diagnosed with skin cancer uh, at the age of 24. And uh, or around the age of 24. And, and it was really odd because there was no history of skin cancer in my family. There was no history of any cancers related to skin cancer in my family. So that means that there's not this genetic component. When we think about things like cancer, we usually quickly, you know, think about a genetic component like, oh, you know, there's a, a lineage of cancer that's gone on. And in my family, there has not been. And I was not you know, a sun addict by any means. I mean, yes, I was living in Southern California, but I wasn't going out and baking on the beach every single day. I had a job and things that I had to do. And um, I was doing fitness competitions at the time and I occasionally used a like tanning salon, but again, nothing that was like outrageous, right? So this was kind of the slap in the face that I needed to say, okay, what is going on here? Because Having gone to college, and I, by the way, I got my degree in kinesiology, the study of fitness, nutrition, and health, and I was a personal trainer, and here I am, like, doing all the things that I learned in school, like eating healthy and exercising, but it, I also continued to struggle with maintaining my weight, like keeping my weight balanced, and I had these, you know, accumulation of health things that were going on and the skin cancer stuff, and I really started to question then, like, what is going on here? Um, what is happening? And, and every time I would go to the doctor and get my annual physical done, you know, I would basically leave there with accolades about my health. I had the picture of perfect health, my cholesterol, my blood pressure, like all the typical blood markers looked perfect on paper. And they would say, you know, you're one of our best patients, you're physically active and you eat right. And things just didn't equate for me. And that's when shortly after I was diagnosed with cancer that um, FDN, you know, kind of landed in my lap and I saw Reed speak for the very first time. And he was talking about all these things, these physiological aspects that nobody ever discussed in my college physiology class about how the body really worked. And that's when things started to make sense and all the pieces of the puzzle started to come together. And it became really clear that from a functional standpoint, my body was a hot mess. <laughs> Um, and that proved to be true when I got into the FDN course and ran my first set of functional lab tests on myself and found that I had really high oxidative stress, which is an indication of cellular or DNA damage. 
I had a congested liver, so my liver wasn't moving toxins out of my body. I was in a state of adrenal dysfunction and hormone imbalance, and I had bacteria overgrowth in my gut. So it was really the perfect storm that helped to cultivate the skin cancer that I was diagnosed with. And, you know, here I am sitting talking to you uh, more than 10 years later, and I've been, you know, I'm skin cancer free and I have been ever since that first you know, spot that finding, getting it removed and it's never come back because of the things that I've done, you know, as an FDN and learning through FDN and applying in my life, basically. This is amazing. And there's a universal theme with the FDNs that I think is particularly attractive to anyone out there listening. And that's, it's like, we all seem to be getting better with age. <laughs> like our health <laughs> issues are getting less. Our bodies are getting healthier. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with um, Justine Altman. I just saw, she's an FDN practitioner. She'll absolutely be on. We have a recording scheduled guys. So uh, stay tuned for that episode. But she has a before and after picture of her like 20 versus 40. I mean, I think she would say this herself. I mean, she looks better at 40 years old. I mean, significantly better, younger, healthier. And I think that's why she posted the picture. You know, she's proven the point that when the body is under good health, it can it can do that. And I'm sitting here, you know, as a young guy thinking about what it would be like to get a skin cancer or any type of cancer, really, diagnosis right now. And I just, I mean, I imagine this has to be incredibly scary, overwhelming. I mean, that's, you know... There's a lot of different symptoms I've dealt with, and I know, Jen, obviously you just listed many symptoms you've dealt with, but the cancer diagnoses are things that are kind of in a ballpark all themselves, right? Like it's it's a heavy hitter, and when we hear that, our minds instantly go to um, a nasty thing. So it's amazing to know that you got that, you overcame that, and you got to where you are today. I do want to rewind a little bit to just kind of walk through, um, you know, the path to getting to FDN. You know, I... I could be wrong, but I'm going to doubt you went just from skin cancer diagnosis to listening to someone like Reed Davis and being like 100% I'm in. I mean, was there some, you know, relationship to the natural side of things or something that hinted towards that route that led you to even getting into that side of things to begin with? Or was it truly, you know, I heard Reed Davis and I just knew this is what I had to do. It was, you know, I had, had always been open to alternative therapies. I guess like I was somebody that, you know, went to the chiropractor on a regular basis and found that the chiropractor was able to alleviate a lot of like aches and pains that I had been feeling. And the chiropractor that I was seeing uh, was a more holistic minded chiropractor. It wasn't just about going in and getting an adjustment. It was about, you know, doing myofascial release and the whole concept of the body, like more of like a sports uh, minded chiropractor. And I definitely was into getting massages. I mean, my friend had gone to massage therapy, my best friend from high school had gone to massage therapy school. And so we had our, you know, always kind of dabbled in these kind of, I don't even, I, I don't think that they're really alternative anymore because they are more mainstream practices, but just, mm -hmm. you know, different modalities of healing. And so it wasn't completely nuance to me that there was something else out there. But I do think what is interesting is that the, you know, what we're seeing now is that um, the newer people that are coming through the FDN course or the clients that we are working with, they have done a ton of research. You know, there's this whole emergence of kind of like the biohacking world or that, you know, functional health approaches are becoming a little bit more mainstream. Um, there's more information information on the internet. I mean, I can't say like I've been that I never really thought to Google my symptoms and look for something different. You know, like that wasn't really a concept that was in the forefront of my mind. So it kind of is like, you know, we just fell in my lap and it was instantaneous that I was like, this is the solution. <laughs> this is right. He's saying all the right things. I mean, it just it made incredible sense to me when I heard it, essentially. That's good enough for me. I just think that's awesome that that transition happened um, so quickly. And I mean, thank God it did, right? Because mm -hmm. who knows what would have happened with a, a skin cancer diagnosis, right? An autoimmune condition, well, let's say most, let's take basic examples, like maybe some of the thyroid ones, mm -hmm. certainly not pleasant, certainly wouldn't wish them on anyone, but you can survive for decades with those things. And unfortunately mm -hmm. you're suffering, but you could go for a while with that. Whereas, yeah, I mean, the cancer and stuff, that's, you got to make decisions. 
and you have to make them somewhat quickly. And I just, I give a lot of credit to anyone who is willing to take that path um, so early on, especially at a young age. And I also am forgetting, I mean, yeah, in Southern California, um, I already mentioned in this podcast, guys, like I was out there literally living in Southern California. I was there for several months. And you know what? It is different. There's organic burger stands on, or not burger stands, but burger (laughs) stores rather, like every couple of blocks, Whole Foods, farmer's markets, juice bars. I mean, there's like these special filtered water stores. Like it really is actually different than where I'm from. Like it's a lot different, actually. There's way more people that are conscious about this out there. So it's it's cool. I mean, that just shows what that can do. If maybe you grow up in that environment, who knows how much that helped. So, all right. So that's how you got into FDN. And you already had mentioned some of the things that you found on the labs. And this is a part of the interviewer conversation today that I've been having a lot of fun with with the other FDNs. We're kind of like dissecting different things that they found and we're not going super in depth. I know that's not what everyone wants to hear, but seriously, if you're listening to this, you're listening for a reason. You're probably curious about FDN and the FDN Thrive program and like what can you find on the lab tests that we utilize? Certainly that's not all we do, but it's usually a major component for people, right? Mm -hmm. So you brought up something with the oxidative stress side of things and I know that we don't necessarily um, test for that directly anymore with biohealth kind of switching up, which is a lab we used to use. Um, but still, oxidative stress is a principle. It's not just one test marker on one simple thing. And no one's brought that up yet. So could you touch on what is oxidative stress and like what was that indicating for Jen Maleka's body at the time? Yeah, so oxidation, if we explain what oxidation is, is oxidation is the breakdown of cells, basically. So if you think about like a, um, to put this into practical sense for our listeners, like when you take a bite out of an apple and you leave it on the counter and the white part of the inside of the apple turns brown, that's oxidation that's happening. Or if you have a metal trash can or a piece of metal that you leave outside and it rusts and it turns brown, that's oxidation that's happening. It's a breakdown of material. So oxidative stress is the breakdown of cells. It's cellular damage, or and we can even say that that's DNA damage. So the counter to oxidative stress is, you know, then you go, well, how do you prevent that from happening? Well, antioxidants, nutrients are one of the things that that help to prevent that. But we also want to look at like, you know, what is the inflammation and the toxic elements that are um, promoting the breakdown, like this cellular damage that is occurring. And it relates back to like my cancer situation and that cancer cells are like genetically damaged or mutated cells that are happening. They're not healthy cells, right? And so um, oxidation, we can also look at that as like a a metric for how fast you're aging. Like is your body aging faster than it should be essentially? And so we want to have normal, healthy range of, of oxidative levels going on in the body. Okay, awesome. And I think one thing that people could really relate to there, or at least um, I shouldn't say relate to, but that they're probably familiar with is that term antioxidants, right? Everyone's heard of that. They might be like, oh, well, I get that from fruit or vitamins, right? But they have no idea what an antioxidant (laughs) actually is. And to be fair, um, I wouldn't have either a few years back. So um, I totally get that. But I think that's really a missing link for a lot of people. So I appreciate you um, kind of explaining that. Now, one interesting part about your story that we haven't really gotten to yet, but I'll go full circle with this. We had an interview come out last week, guys, with Brandy Buscow. And I had mentioned a story of my own where, you know, basically I was saying how FDN is, when we work with a client, it's not a revolving door business, right? We don't want you to be coming back to us uh, for the rest of your life or to any of our other practitioners, right? Like you are supposed to be learning things so that you are an empowered individual. Yeah, maybe you check in every year or two to run some type of test. That's great. But, you know, you shouldn't have to need us every single week for the rest of your life. That's probably uh, not a good sign. And I had explained how, like, you know, through things that I learned, even if I had been a client and not a practitioner, I would have been able to fix something myself because I saw what was going on based on what I learned. And bam, there I go. I didn't have to do the revolving door thing. Now, where I'm getting at with this is I know for you, not only did you have the skin cancer thing go on, but I forget when it was. I think it was either, you know, late 20s or early 30s. Didn't you also have like an issue with mold in the house that led to this mm-hmm. thyroid condition? And then you were also able to address that. I mean, could we talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, and actually they are completely unrelated, which is very interesting. Um, when I got into FDN and, and you know, had the skin, the skin cancer was the first instance. And I would say that my other like, main complaint at the time was the allergies, ear infections, and the weight maintenance. And through the application of the FDN principles, like, and as what I love that you say is like, you know, FDN is on a revolving door. Like we really work with clients to teach them, you know, realistic and sustainable practices that help them not only to achieve results, but to maintain them for the rest of their life. Right. And so mm -hmm. I applied these principles to myself. And as I already stated, you know, skin, it's been skin cancer free. Um, I have zero allergies. Those so started to go away. No more ear infections, no more migraines. Um, and was able to then like, once the time I hit 30 at 30 years old, I was at my best weight. Like I was my thin, like leanest, healthiest weight I'd ever been. Right. But life still happens as I tell my clients and that, you know, we <laughs> can't predict things like traffic or uh, water damage leaks in our house from rain. And that's essentially what happened to me. So here I was, I got to this, like the best state of health I had ever been in in my entire life. And then all of a sudden again, you know, that concept of going back to the weight gain and the belt loop, um, the belt notches, like slowly over the course of two years, things started to like decline. Like I slowly started to gain weight. I went to the dentist and the dentist made a comment about grinding my teeth and, and he was asking me if I was stressed. And I'm like, I'm not stressed. That's really odd. Well, um, as little people know that like bruxism or teeth grinding is related to candida yeast overgrowth and certain parasites. So I was like, Hmm, let me run a stool sample test on myself again after I <laughs> you know, gone through a process of cleaning up my gut. And sure enough, there was some candida stuff going on in there, some parasites and some other things. So I went to work as an FDN again, doing all the things that I knew how to do and things still weren't getting better. Um, if anything, they continued to kind of decline. Like I continued to slowly put on weight, like over the course of two years, I put on 15 pounds. I all of a sudden started breaking out with cystic acne. I never had acne in my entire life, even as a teenager going through puberty. And then it really reached the like the threshold broke when I started having like breakthrough periods. So I was still on birth control pill and I was having breakthrough periods even on during while I was on the pill. And then um waking up to like inflamed breasts that like this went on for months and it was just now I, here I start thinking breast cancer, right? Because I've got this history of skin cancer and I'm like freaking out and I sure. start going to see all these women's health specialists here in San Diego and nobody has any clue how to help me. Like my general practitioner said, well, let's just keep an eye on it. And I'm sitting here going, are you kidding me? Like this could be breast cancer. You just want to keep an eye on it. Like I could die tomorrow. And, um, you know, this other, uh, holistic, uh, practitioner was like, well, let's put you on progesterone cream. And I'm like, you don't even know what's wrong with me. You just want to prescribe me like hormones basically. And you would have no reason why you would be doing that. No, thank you. And one women's health specialist said, well, maybe you've put on 15 pounds of muscle. And I was like, if you know anything about women's metabolism, like for, it's extremely hard for a female to put on muscle. Like even during my um, strict training periods when I was training for fitness competitions, like I would be lucky if I put on two pounds of muscle, like over a, you know, like a three month period of lifting heavy and, and really like managing my diet. So all of these things were just ridiculous and come to find out what was going on is that we had mold in our house. And so I was dealing with mold toxicity, mold illness type of stuff, triggered estrogen um, dominance, which is elevated estrogen levels in my body, which downstream triggered um, Hashimoto's, uh, an autoimmune condition for the thyroid. And so this is, you know, those things in our life where like, I could have never predicted that the mold was going to happen. Luckily I was doing all the things that I was doing that probably kept, you know, my body afloat for the period of time that it was at. And then it just got to this breaking point. But even with that, I was able to immediately take action once I knew what was going on in my environment 
and I was in remission with, with my Hashimoto's within six months of fi figuring it out, you know, and that's and the magic of FDN, right? <laughs> exactly. And that final point is the exact reason I wanted to bring up this story, guys, because, you know, most people don't go into remission of Hashimoto's, period. Like that just doesn't happen. You know, this is turning into a lot of people, a lifelong sentence of Synthroid or, you know, whatever, right? They're on medications for a very long time. And I love how, okay, great. You know, I, I learned these principles before I can apply them again. It might be a little different here, right? Like, you know, you can apply all the principles in the world. If you're in a moldy home, that's just going to affect anyone given enough time. Um, but it has to do with what we do as FDNs, like you didn't give up. First of all, you know, you kept looking at things because you knew, even though your symptoms might be, well, I mean, yours kind of weren't even that common, right? But you knew that they weren't normal is the point. Something had to be going on. It didn't make sense. You didn't give up, you figured it out. And then you were able to recover from that in way quicker um, than most people would ever be able to if they could at all. So I really appreciate that. And I want to transition a bit into client successes, because that's another thing we've been talking about a lot on this podcast. We as FDNs have these amazing stories of getting to heal our own bodies. That is great. That is cool. Awesome feeling. There is something insanely differently, uh, insanely different and equally, if not more cool about helping someone else go through that journey, knowing what it's like firsthand to be stuck in that cycle of trial and error. You're out here doing the work, you're out here trying to figure things out and nothing's working. And there is no better person to talk to about this than Jen Maleka um, in terms of, you know, the abundance of client stories that you could probably reference. So I will ask you if you could just, you know, narrow it down to maybe one or two off the top of your head. What are some like amazing, wow, holy cow moments that you've had with clients that they had like huge successes and turnarounds with their health? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first one that comes to mind is a client of mine that um, came to me with muscular sclerosis MS. And we started working together when she was 59. I remember so clearly she was actually referred to me by a friend, like somebody that was a health coach um, and not a health coach like we are, wasn't doing the lab testing stuff, doing different things as a health coach. And, you know, she really wanted her mom to explore working with me because she was struggling so much. Like this woman had come to me and she had tried every trial drug and therapy for her MS and nothing was really working. And on our consultation, her daughter had to sit in on the call with us because her brain fog was so bad that she had a really hard time tracking, you know, in a conversation, basically. So her daughter sat there and helped to facilitate the consultation and through our work together, you know, we worked together for, I think about nine months or so, um, doing the FDN things that we do. So we ran like an adrenal and hormone test. We ran a stool sample test. We ran a food sensitivity test. Um, we did a metabolic typing test and saw where, you know, she had these healing opportunities that nobody was looking at in terms of like adjusting her diet, like making sure that she was getting great quality sleep, like switching up her exercise, eliminating toxins, um, taking supplements that were specific to her based on how the test results were showing, like what she, what it is that she needed, where she was deficient in. And by the time she reached her 60th, 60th birthday doing our work, she was back to work as the top real estate agent in like her, her business or her company. Um, she was running around playing with her five-year-old grandson that she had and like watching him on her own. She had uh, weaned off of some of her medications. She was able to sleep through the night because before she was struggling with like uh, leg neuropathy that would keep her up all night. And now she was able to sleep through the night and she would come to our calls all, all on her own with a ton of energy and feeling amazing. And this is something that conventional approaches, you know, never were able to provide her because they were missing looking at these other pieces of the puzzle, like, and she actually, Evan, after we had our consultation, you know, she wanted to think about it. And initially she wrote me back and said, you know, I think I'm going to explore, I have an appointment with this other functional um, medicine doctor. I think I'm going to explore that and see what kinds of things that they have to offer. And I was just really upfront with her and said, you know, is another drug or therapy what you need? Haven't you tried all of those things? Like maybe it's time to try something different. 
And she immediately wrote me back. She's like, you're totally right. Sign me up right now, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, so I love that story because it also shows that no matter how old you are, it's still possible, right? That it's, a, it's not a matter of age. Like I think sometimes we chalk up these symptoms and things that we're going to, to like going through that we're just aging and, and yes, we age and things change and shift, but you know, I like to say that we're in the business of making the impossible possible. So mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites. And then there's a woman that I'm working with actually right now that I just think is incredible as well, that, um, she came to me a referral of another client that I had been working with and she had been dealing with SIBO and she actually is from Ohio. So she had gone to the SIBO or she'd gone to the Cleveland clinic. One of the most, I would say touted kind of functional medicine programs, you know, in the country and not to, you know, dish on them by any means they're doing what it is that they're trained to do and how they work with people, but she wasn't getting the results like her SIBO. I mean, it's telling that she had to go back three times to be treated for SIBO. Like she wasn't getting long lasting results. Right. And so we, you know, did our consult together, um, you know, a little disappointing that she had not received like a full analysis of what was going on with her body. Like, you know, they hadn't done an adrenal hormone test to look at this chronic inflammatory process that might've been going on and other hormonal factors that play into digestion. And, um, they hadn't run a recent food sensitivity test on her or a stool sample test to address what's going on in her gut. So of course we ran all those tests. She came back with quite a few food sensitivities and sensitivities to things that she was eating quite frequently. Like she's sensitive to beef and chicken, two primary pro proteins in the standard American diet, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she also had some gut bugs going on and some hormone imbalances. I mean, one of her other main complaints was weight and she came back with elevated levels of estrogen, which is a huge factor when it comes to weight gain or weight loss resistance. And so of course we got to work, you know, doing what we do as FDNs and within, within like less than two weeks of working together, she emailed me and said that she had dropped eight pounds and that her SIBO bloating had been reduced by like 80%, you know, within two weeks of the work right. that we had done. And I just met with her this week actually. And now she's all the way back down to her college weight. So here's, I think she's in her mid to late thirties at this point in her life, back down to her college weight, feeling amazing in her body. She has consistent energy all day long. She's back to her more vigorous workout routines. She basically has like no more bloating, any of the SIBO symptoms at all, unless she eats something off of her, you know, diet recommendations. Like if she has a food that she's sensitive to, but now she knows, right? So we even were having this conversation the other day that She's like, oh, well, I've had a, I had a coffee like with some almond milk in it and almond milk, like foods with lectins or some things that she should be ideally avoiding. And she was like, I felt a little bloated and fluffy afterwards. She's like, but now she's like, at least I know. And she's like, and I know how to get the, that, you know, that little puffiness that I just accrued. Like I know how to get it off. Right. And she's really had to make some changes. I mean, she's still, um, is showing to be a little reactive to beef and chicken. So she's been really diving into exploring alternative proteins like lamb and bison and elk and some of the more gamey things out there. I'm really proud of her for the progress that she's made, but these are, you know, things that, that most practitioners um, are not exploring, right. Or guiding people on. Cause I'll tell you, there's also, besides the lab testing that we do, there's also the coaching component, like with her specifically, there was you know, a lot of mindset shifts that had to come around food of like, well, why do I have to eat this way? And I like to look at it instead of like, well, you get, you know, this is what you get to eat. You get to eat this way for your body. Like when we start to shift the mindset and create what I call positive fe feedback loops, which is when I eat this, I feel good. It's incentive to keep eating this versus mm -hmm. recognizing when I eat this thing, I feel like crap. So that's a negative feedback loop. It's that concept of, you know, you put a, your hand on a hot stove, you're unlikely to do it again. Um, right. so we help them, the lab tests help them to make these connections. And then we help to facilitate these conversations with them that help them to make the mind shift and the behavior changes so that it becomes just a new way of being 
in life, which makes it sustainable and realistic. That's a great point. And you know what? I think even myself, and I should back away from that a little bit. I hone too much in on the lab testing sometimes, and that is far from what we do, um, or the only thing we do rather, you know, we focus on dress, which is diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. Um, that's actually the foundational stuff, right? We always focus on that. And then there is the coaching aspect. You know, we're not just getting on a call um, and talking to the person. There is a real, you can tell the difference between someone who knows what to do as a coach and someone who's just talking to you. I'll put it that way. And FDNs are coaches, right? And I know you've even done advanced training um, in coaching to kind of further enhance that relationship with your clients, which I think is amazing. And I loved those two stories you brought up. For those listening out there, I know I had said before, you know, I do know um, a lot of Jen's story, but no, I didn't know either of those client successes, especially something like MS, guys. That's not a joke. That's an autoimmune disease that grants you in rare cases that can kill the person from the autoimmunity itself. And you can absolutely die from complications that come with that condition. To hear a woman at 59 years old who can't even you know, do the consultation by herself because of the brain fog and then to go out, I mean, what? You said at 60, so what, a year later, basically, going out and doing real estate work, which is probably not um, the least stressful thing, I'd imagine. You know, they're selling in that. It's hustle and bustle. Uh, that's pretty cool. And results don't lie. I'll, I'll just put it that way. You know, I'm, I'm, I like what you said about the Cleveland Clinic. You know, they're doing what they can. We're not in competition with anyone else, but results are results. Mm -hmm. And you got better results for a woman than, well, a lot of people, obviously, but in this case, that woman, than other people could. And I think that's it's very important for people to hear these stories. It's why I believe the FDN interviews overall are actually going to be the most popular long-term on this podcast. And it's what got me into FDN to begin with. So um, thank you for sharing that. As we kind of come to the conclusion of the interview here, I have two quick things for you. One is where can people find you if they want to reach out to you personally and work with Jen Maleka? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my work um, as the Holistic Health Boss is my brand. And holistic is spelt with a W, like whole foods or whole, you know, looking at the whole body is kind of my approach as the approach of FDN is. Um, I'm super active on Instagram, so you can find me on Instagram at Holistic Health Boss, where I share tips and daily um, bits of inspiration, as well as on Facebook at Holistic Health Boss. And my website is holistichealthboss.com. Okay, and that is holistic with a W, you guys, just so... Um, you know, there, my final question for you, Jen, and this is like the staple question that we do in the podcast. I love it. It's been super fun. And I want to like create a compilation of these one day, but, and I know this is hard. I always got to put this disclaimer on for FDNs because we're always like thinking about things super in depth when it comes to health and people answer the question. They're like, well, but just humor me here. If Jen Maleka could make everyone in this world do one thing for their health what would that be? Oh gosh. I'm so torn with this because I think there's two, you know, two big things that have had an impact in my personal health and that I also see in the health of my clients. You know, I think everybody tends to focus on like diet and exercise and like take this supplement, but Sleep is huge. And I'm not talking about like how many hours you're sleeping. I'm talking about sleeping according to your circadian rhythm. And this was for me going through the FDN course when Reed talked about this, I was like, oh my God, why isn't anybody talking about this? That based on the natural rhythm of our body, it's very critical for us to be sleeping from approximately 10 p.m. to about 4 a.m. because of this natural circadian rhythm that we have. And when our body does certain things, at nighttime to actually restore, repair, and heal itself. And a lot of people are not doing that in this modern day world that we live in. So that's one, and I'm going to share two just because. Um, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you know, Evan, the biggest thing for me lesson has been like learning how to navigate life differently because I'm a super type A personality. Um, I am driven you know, by passion and, and to succeed in life, as I think a lot of us are. And when I look back, you know, some of that, that passion and drive and that A-type personality is also what contributed to the decline in my health, because I just kept 
pushing my body, no matter how loud it was yelling at me and trying to tell me that there was something wrong. And, you know, our body will do anything that we ask it to, but that doesn't mean that we should. And so I like to say that, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. And that's where, like, if you're doing, you know, you're, I hear so many times people are like, well, I'm eating healthy. I'm doing this. I'm taking supplements. I'm going to sleep but they're still acting like a maniac in their life where they're like burning the candle at both ends, like putting too much on their plate, um, over committing themselves, like still trying to live their same old lifestyle, which is probably a big part of what drove their health into the ground in the first place. So for me, there's been a huge lesson in all of this of, um, not taking on so much, allowing more space, for rest and and balance in my life and it's really hard because i am a workaholic uh, by nature but it's it's huge and i and my clients all you know struggle with that too we've we've all gotten so caught up in the rat race of the modern day world and that's been a, a huge contributor to what we're seeing i think in the state of people's health these days Oh man, this resonates with me so much because something that Jen and I have in common is that we are definitely both type A personalities at heart. (laughs) Something that is kind of embarrassing as a health professional to share now is a very ironic part of my story, which was when I came from Pennsylvania all the way out to San Diego to learn more about health and find people such as Jen. I was actually working seven days a week, well, seven nights a week rather, doing night shift delivering food because I didn't understand that eight hours of sleep was not the same depending on the time of day that you got it, okay? So, for example, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., that kind of sleep cycle is a lot different than 5 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon. I think anyone who's done that knows that. They can feel it, but the science also backs that up. But that's just one example of many ways type A personalities kind of overdo it and work themselves to death. So I learned that you can be eating organic, you can be having good relationships, you can be doing everything else right, but you cannot beat the hell out of the body. I treat myself super well now so that I can do the work I love as much as possible, but it ain't 15, 16 hours a day. I just cannot do that. And most people can't if we want to maintain optimal health. And that is totally okay. The longer, right? It's a long-term game. And the longer we can stay healthier, we're actually going to be able to put more work into the things that we love over time. So I think that's something that we can all get behind. Um, if you Again, if you want to reach out to Jen, you can go to the holistichealthboss.com. That's W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C healthboss.com. And of course, as always, I've been your host, Evan Transu, aka Health Coach Ev. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the FDN Thrive Podcast. And if you would be so kind as to leave a five-star review on wherever you are listening to this podcast, we'd really appreciate it. It helps us get this information out there to people that might not know anything about this. I cannot tell you how much that means to us, and I'm sure it means the world to them. So we will see you next time. I'm looking forward to talking with you again. Thanks for tuning in to the FDN Thrive Podcast. If you feel like you've been stuck in the cycle of trial and error when it comes to your health issues, our team can help. Whether you've tried every different diet out there without lasting success, spent way too much money on supplements at your local health food store, or been told that your lab tests are normal despite feeling anything but normal, we have your back. Go to FDNThrive.com and click the Get Started Here button if you're ready to stop playing guessing games with your health. That's FDNThrive.com.